you can be an amazing professional, a teacher, a coach, a guide, and you can hire an amazing teacher, coach, and guide and get exactly what you want, have a life-changing experience. But for me, it is absolutely essential that I also present myself as a friend because eventually I want to be out of a job. I want to work myself out of a job with my students. I want them to reach the level of fluency in their second language that they want. I want them to have confidence in the process and in knowing themselves and knowing exactly what they need to do to keep going on their own. I want to help people discover what's holding them back to get past it, to fulfill their goals and not to need me anymore. I don't want my clients to need me anymore. I want my students to outgrow me. But just because I want to be out of a job doesn't mean I want to be out of your life. Hola friends, hi amigos, como están? How are you doing? Yo soy Nikki de Nikki Bannister Language Coaching y estoy aquí para el episodio 93 de Spanish Saturday. Bienvenido. Hi and welcome. Happy Saturday. I am Nikki of Nikki Bannister Language Coaching and I am here for episode 93 of Spanish Saturday. I've got something special in store for episode 100. Stay tuned. Estoy planeando algo muy especial para el episodio 100. Entonces, uh, oh, ¿cómo se dice? Stay tuned. I know, tenemos unas opciones para expresar esto en español. There are a couple different ways to express this in Spanish, like stay tuned, but I have totally forgotten all of them, so... Espera más, espera más noticias, <laughs> espera más de esto. When I forget something, when you forget something in your second language, in your third language, all you can do is find another way to communicate what you want to say. Um, it'll come back to you. It'll always come around. It's a lifelong process. It's a journey. And that's something I want to talk about today. But first, let's check in on our week. Entonces, eso es un fantástico ejemplo que yo no planeé uh, de olvidar una frase que yo sé que yo sé, pero que que he olvidado en el momento que se me ha escapado. Uh, y eso es cuando hablas en tu segundo idioma, a veces vas a olvidar las frases que sabes. Y esto es totalmente normal. Uh, y va, va a volver, te va a volver eventualmente, pero uh, solo hay que encontrar un poco de creatividad y una nueva manera de expresar lo que quieres decir, porque siempre tu opinión vale, lo que quieres expresar vale, uh, y hay que comunicarlo como puedas. It's always worth it to communicate your, your point of view, your, what you have to say. Um, stick with it. Sometimes we have to get a little creative. Um, but, but sometimes that's where brilliance happens. A veces eso es donde encontramos las ideas y las frases nuevas más brillantes. Uh, cuando practicamos un poco de creatividad, when we get a little bit creative. All right, now I always like to start by checking in with you, seeing how your week is going. Uh, how's it been since last episode? How's it hanging? Uh, ¿Qué pasa? ¿Qué pedo? <laughs> uh, desde el último episodio, eso fue muy mexicano. Pero ¿qué pasa? Uh, ¿Cómo has estado desde el último episodio? ¿Cómo va la semana para ti? Uh, vamos a ponernos al tanto. Let's just catch up a little bit. Uh, my week's been great. Uh, the weather has uh, gotten much more lovely in California and I am becoming, well, I'm a little sun-kissed today, probably a little too sun-kissed, but, um, but I'm getting some color and it feels nice. I played tennis for three hours this morning in the sun and it was gorgeous and... I'm very happy. <laughs> Entonces, yo, uh, yo he tenido una buena semana. El tiempo ha cambiado. Es muy bonito. Uh, aquí muy lindo en California. Y uh, yo estoy un poco bronceada. Solo un poco, pero probablemente un poco más bronceada que debo. De, uh, un poco más bronceada que, que debo uh, estar porque yo recibí más, mucho sol hoy. Uh, pero... Uh, yo jugué al tenis uh, en, el, en la mañana, esta mañana, por tres horas en el sol y fue fantástico. Uh, y también fue difícil, también uh, me desafió uh, trabajar en mi mentalidad en la cancha de tenis. Y siempre eso es donde yo trabajo 
mess in mi mentalidad. So I, I paused a little bit when I said that tentness was fantastic this morning because it truly was fantastic, but um, it was also difficult. It also challenged me, which it always does. This is why I love tennis. Es porque me encanta tanto jugar al tenis. Um, but I love it because it's, honestly, that's where I get to do some of my best mindset work. I am always working on my mindset when I am on the tennis court, and today was no exception. And speaking of mindset and mindset work, what does that mean? Uh, I wanted to share with you for today's episode, I want to share with you the introduction that I use for all of my classes. It doesn't matter if these are in the, these are in my Spanish classes, but I would say them the same in my English classes. These are for my beginning intermediate, for my intermediate students, for my advanced students, for all of my students. This is how I introduce myself for each and every class. And I'll tell you why. Entonces, Yo quería, hablando de la mentalidad, que significa trabajar en tu mentalidad, yo quisiera compartir, compartir contigo en este episodio cómo yo me presento para cada uno de mis clases. Y estos son videos. Mis clases son videos que mis estudiantes pueden ver una y otra vez. Uh, y para todos niveles, para mis estudiantes más principiantes, hasta intermedios, hasta avanzados, uh, yo tengo la misma presentación, la misma introducción cuando yo empiezo cada video con ellos. Uh, y voy a compartirlo contigo y vamos a hablar un poco de por qué, por qué es, es significante. So, this is the way that I introduce myself to all of my students uh, in, in my classes for every single level in every single class. Oh, shoot, there was something else that I said in Spanish and I was like, oh, I gotta translate that into English. Uh, sip of wine while I try to remember. No, no recuerdo. Okay, si me vuelvo, yo repito. If it comes back to me, I will say it. All right. Uh, this is my introduction for all of my classes. Yo sé, yo sé. That was English and Spanish. That was an English say and a Spanish yo. Yo digo, I say. <laughs> that was funny. Okay, that was punny, actually. All right. Uh, para presentarme para cada uno de mis clases con mis estudiantes en español, yo digo, Hola, yo soy Nikki, tu maestra, tu coach, tu guía y tu amiga. Y yo estoy aquí para empezar la clase número uno, dos, tres, da, 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 da. Eso es como me presento para cada una de mis clases. So, this is my introduction for every single one of my classes. And usually I'm doing this in Spanish. I teach more Spanish classes than I do English classes, but um, in English it would be, hi, I'm Nikki, your teacher, your coach, your guide, and your friend. And I'm here to bring you to get started with class number one, two, three, et cetera, et cetera. And that is my introduction. And I've had students that took classes um, from me, someone who took classes from me for um, a couple of years, who finally asked, she said, you know, when you when you introduce yourself at the beginning of each class, you say something, oh, I'm sorry, I'm conflating two different students, but a student who sat through several classes with me before she finally said, you know, in your introduction, you say, hola, soy Nikki, and she said, you know, you say you're my teacher, you say you're my coach, and then you use this other word. What is that? Um, and so I'm going to walk you through why that's my introduction and why exactly it is that I am a coach and why I want to put myself out of a job. Entonces, yo voy a explicar por qué yo uso esto, cada, cada de esos títulos, cada de estas palabras en mi presentación con mis estudiantes. Y por qué es que yo quiero quedarme sin trabajo uh, en mi profesión como una coach. ¿Y qué significa ser una coach también? Uh, y yo, dice, yo dije también en inglés que yo tenía un estudiante que después de muchas clases uh, me preguntó, Nikki, cada vez que, que empiezas la clase, dices algo como, como tú eres mi maestra, tú eres mi coach, pero 
¿qué es la otra palabra que usas y qué significa esto? ¿Qué es una guía? Uh, porque es un estudiante de español que no sabe la palabra todavía. Entonces, te voy a explicar todo en este episodio. So, when you have a goal of any kind, right? When you have a goal, you need to figure out how you're going to get it done. That's how you start, right? And usually a goal involves learning something new. For example, if your goal is to learn English or if your goal is to learn Spanish, if your goal is to become fluent or more fluent in a second language, then first of all, you got to start by learning that language. You need some lessons. You're going to need to be able to be presented with that language in a way that you understand. You're going to need to be able to start to understand that language. So that is why, number one, I say what I am as a teacher, and I've been a teacher for so, so long now. I started being a teacher professionally when I was a sophomore in high school. I started tutoring other students um, who were a few years behind me in math. That was the first subject I tutored and then eventually I tutored all kinds of subjects and then I started working in schools as an assistant in special education and then I became a classroom teacher um, and then I became a trainer in uh, the county government level um, and then finally I wound up here where I was lucky enough um, and fortunate enough to be able to start my own business um, and have my own life and language coaching business. And so number one, I say that I am a teacher because whatever it is, when you set a goal, when you have something new that you want to do, you need a teacher. You need someone who's going to help you understand what it is that you need to learn. We all need teachers. And for a lot of us, sometimes our favorite teacher is YouTube. My husband's favorite teacher, YouTube. Uh, sometimes our favorite teacher is an app, something, you know, some other app um, for languages. There's Babbel, there's Duolingo, there's Ella, there's oh, so many language apps. Um, and sometimes our favorite teacher is a book, um, a movie, something else. But whatever it is, we pick a teacher, some sort of example, something that's going to help us, give us the material that we need and help us understand how to do it. So first and foremost, I am a teacher and that is what I do. I present and I create lessons and classes in English and Spanish and I also also create episodes like this to help explain our mindset and why it matters and break down how to accomplish goals and understand yourself and make changes in your own life. Entonces, primero lo que yo digo en mi presentación para todas mis clases, lo que yo digo es que soy una maestra, que soy tu maestra. Y esta es importante, ¿no? Porque cada vez que, que, que tenemos una meta, que queremos hacer algo nuevo, necesitamos aprender cómo hacerlo. Necesitamos aprender algo, nue algo nuevo y necesitamos entender o comprender cómo hacerlo. Entonces, para mí, yo soy maestra y esto profesionalmente empezó para mí cuando yo era en mi segundo año de la escuela secundaria. Porque en, este, en ese entonces yo empecé a, a enseñar, a tutorear a los estudiantes unos años atrás, unos años menor uh, que yo. Y uh, yo he estado trabajando como una maestra desde entonces. Entonces yo empecé a hacer tutorea y después yo trabajé en una escuela uh, en la educación especial como asistente uh, individual y después yo uh, tenía mi, mi propia uh, aula y yo era la maestra de la clase y después yo trabajé como una entrenadora de Uh, de nuevos empleados en el, uh, en el condado para el gobierno uh, y eventualmente con mucha suerte, con mucha fortuna buena y mala, yo uh, llegué al punto para abrir mi propio negocio y trabajar de tiempo completo para mí misma para mi propia, en mi propio negocio, uh, como una maestra. Y yo soy maestra de inglés, de español. Significa que yo doy a mis estudiantes la información en el, en el segundo idioma que necesitan en una manera que se puede entender. Entonces, yo creo las clases, yo creo las lecciones para mis estudiantes y también como un coach 
una coach como una maestra mejor de la mentalidad y de todo, también yo explico qué es la mentalidad, qué, qué significa trabajar en tu mentalidad y cómo funciona tu cerebro, cómo funciona cuando quieres alcanzar una meta, cuando quieres lograr algo, qué es lo que necesitas entender sobre ti mismo, sobre tu cerebro y sobre los obstáculos que vienen en el viaje hacia la meta. Entonces, yo preparo las lecciones porque yo soy maestra y esta es mi primera posición. Y la verdad es que yo creo que la mayoría de nosotros son maestros en algo. Entonces, una pregunta para ti para poner en los comentarios. Dime, ¿en qué eres? ¿De qué eres maestro? ¿Quién, ¿Quiénes son tus estudiantes? ¿Y de qué eres maestro? So, this is something really, when it comes to being a teacher, I think the vast majority of us are teachers in some capacity. And so, that's a good question for you to put in the comments. Tell me, what are you a teacher of? What is something that you teach others? And who are your students? Are they your kids? Are they employees? Are they coworkers? Are they parents? Are they who, who are your students and what are you a teacher of? A teacher is somebody who presents the material that somebody else needs and helps them to understand it. Una maestra es simplemente alguien que, que presenta la información que la persona, que el estudiante necesita entender y que los ayuda a entenderlo. Entonces, ¿de qué eres maestro y quiénes son tus estudiantes? ¿Son tus hijos? ¿Son tus uh, em empleados? ¿Con sus compañeros? ¿Son quiénes son? La segunda... La segunda cosa, el segundo título que, que yo uh, me doy cuando me presento en cada una de mis clases es que yo soy una coach. Coach. Y esto es una palabra que no tiene una buena traducción en español, entonces yo siempre, siempre digo en inglés, yo soy una coach. Uh, y, ¿Y qué es una coach y cómo es diferente que una maestra? Porque hay mucha similaridad, hay muchos maestros que también son coaches y hay muchos coaches que también tienen la responsabilidad de un maestro. Pero ¿cuál es la diferencia que es una coach? Coach. <ríe> um, so coach, by the way, you'll hear me saying it when I switch to the Spanish because it's not a word that translates really well between English and Spanish. We've created this whole profession of coaches that aren't just sports coaches, although they also apply, um, but that are coaches in all sorts of different areas, leadership coaches, communication coaches, professional coaches, organizational coaches, so many kinds. And in Spanish, we still use the word coach in, we use the English word because if we translate it, if we translate it, then it really, it sounds like a, it sounds like a trainer, it sounds, sounds like a sports coach and it doesn't really apply to all those other areas. And so I, I say, hi, I'm Nikki. Yo soy Nikki. I say, I'm Nikki. I'm tu maestra, tu coach. And I always present myself. I always introduce myself to my students that way because coach is a really, really special, mm, I don't want to say step up, but I, I, I do feel that way. Um, it's a really special uh, tangential position to being a teacher um, because a coach is oftentimes showing you what to do and helping you understand something like a teacher does, but a coach has a very special working relationship with their team, with their clients, with their students. A coach is someone that helps you practice, guides you through your practice, helps you practice, and calls you out when you're doing something wrong, not just to correct you, but to help you learn from it in such a way that you learn from it and you become stronger. And this is, again, sports coaches, but this is also all other kinds of coaches and specifically the the kind of work i love to do as a life coach is mindset work to help people with all different areas in their life to know how to approach how to change them how to better them by the way that they approach them with their mind with their mindset and so as a as a coach 
even with my language students, what I'm looking at with them is not just helping them learn, but I'm helping them see and understand the learning process and where they're getting themselves stuck, not because they don't understand a word and not because they don't understand grammar, but because there's there's mindset blocks, because there's some part of the, the learning process and their approach and who they are that they're going to need to look at and and change their strategy around and and really change their mindset around in order to then get around something more, mm, more concrete. There is, it's like the background or the background layer to everything to help you be successful with all your other goals. Entonces, la segunda cosa, el segundo título que yo me doy cuando me presento a mis estudiantes es que yo soy una coach. Y una coach es, hay muchas similaridades con los maestros, pero es algo... Al lado de ser un maestro es un poco diferente y para mí yo pienso que es, es más especial porque ser un, ser un coach significa que tienes una relación muy especial con tu equipo, con los miembros de tu equipo, si eres un, un entrenador deportivo, pero de todos tipos de coaches, uh, tienes una relación muy especial con tus clientes, con tus estudiantes, porque eres en una posición para, hola vez, uh, ¿cómo estás? ¿qué tal? Y... Cuando eres un coach, vas a ayudar a, a tu cliente a practicar lo que necesita practicar. Vas a ayudarlo a, a aprender algo como un maestro. Pero estás en una posición especial para llamarle la atención a las áreas donde más necesitan desarrollar, donde necesitan cambiar su, su táctica y su estrategia. Y eso es lo que hace un coach, es no solo presentar la información, pero ayudar a la, la persona, el estudiante, el, el miembro del equipo, al cliente específico para entender la estrategia para entender la táctica y entender a sí mismos también y como su personalidad, como sus características, como la persona quien es, va a contribuir y va a, a, a presentar obstáculos también a, en la meta, en la práctica. Y ser un coach significa que tienes permisión también para decir cosas que un amigo, que un maestro, que otras personas no pueden tener. Es un nivel de relación muy profundo y por eso yo pienso que es muy especial. Porque hay un, hay un nivel de confianza y un nivel de honestidad uh, que no tenemos en todas las relaciones y es eso que produce los resultados más, mmm, más significantes. So, another thing about being a coach there too is that a coach, because of the special relationship that a coach has, a coach is going to call you out on things that your friend wouldn't necessarily call you out on, a teacher wouldn't necessarily say to you in the same way, a coach and a client, a coach and a team member, a coach and a student have a very special relationship because there's it's a deeper level of relationship that requires a high level of trust and requires a very high level of honesty in order to be able to help someone really see themselves and look at themselves and be able to grow and move forward and develop in their goals. And so that is something that also so for me is what makes it so special to be a coach because it's this very deep level of relationship that creates very, very powerful results that creates really powerful and deep changes. Okay. Hola, base. Uh, finally, I say, not finally, sorry, third. My third title that I give myself when I when I introduce myself every single class is I say that I am a guide. I say, yo soy Nikki, tu maestra, tu coach, y tu guía. Y una guía is a guide and a guide is somebody that knows the way 
right? A guide is somebody that knows the path, that knows the route, that's done it before and is showing someone else how to get there. Entonces, el tercer título que me doy cuando me presento en todas mis clases es que yo digo, yo soy Nikki, tu maestra, tu coach. I'm Nikki, your teacher, your coach, and your guide. Yo soy tu guía. ¿Y lo que, qué es una guía? Una guía, eso fue la pregunta que me hizo una estudiante hace unas semanas. ¿Qué es una guía? Porque ella no entendió la palabra en español. Pero una guía es una persona que sabe, que conoce, que sabe la ruta, que conoce la ruta y que puede mostrar a otra persona la ruta y el camino. Eso es que significa ser una guía. Y eso es también el problema con muchos maestros y con muchos coches. Es que deben ser guías. Deben saber, deben ya haber viajado el camino y saber no solo la ruta, pero también saber mostrar la ruta a otra persona. Así que pueden uh, seguir en la misma ruta. Pero a veces tenemos gente en posición de, uh, tenemos personas en la posición de ser maestro, de ser, una, de ser coach también, de ser coaches profesionales de todos tipos que o no han llegado, que o no han viajado la ruta ya por sí mismos, o que han viajado pero no saben mostrar la ruta, no saben hacer que las otras puedan seguir in los mismos pasos. And so this is really, so being a guide, pretty simple definition, right? Somebody who has already traveled somewhere and knows how to show somebody else the way, that's what a guide is. But, but this is really where we encounter a lot of problems with teachers and with coaches. Not with all teachers, not with all coaches, not with the majority, but with some teachers and with some coaches. They should be guides. They should be somebody who's already gone there themselves and who knows how to show other people the way. But oftentimes, sometimes, they're not. Sometimes, they either haven't actually gone where they're trying to help someone else go themselves yet. A veces no han alcanzado todavía el lugar a donde quieren ayudar a otra persona a llegar. Sometimes they haven't actually gotten to the place that they're trying to help someone else go yet. That's a crappy guide. And sometimes they've gotten there, but they haven't looked back and gone, okay, how did I get here? And how can someone else repeat it? And was the way that I got here the best way? Or is there, is there a better way that I could now go back and show someone else how to get here easier? Did I go up and down the mountain and I could show someone else how to go around? For example, <coughs> permiso. Disculpeme, necesito una pausa para mi rosé. Uh, mi vino rosado. Entonces, eso es el problema con, con el guía, que o no, no ha alcanzado el, la destinación, el lugar, por sí mismo, o no sabe cómo mostrar la ruta a otra persona. ¿Por qué? A veces una persona llega, pero no ha, no ha mm, mirado, no ha mirado, no ha pensado muy bien en, en la ruta que, que tomó y si esta ruta fue lo mejor o si fue la mejor o si había otra que, que sería más fácil para llegar, quizás para llegar a, un, a, a, a la destinación en que tú estás en tu vida, tú tenías muchos problemas, muchos obstáculos, tú uh, fuiste por encima de, de la montaña y uh, hubiera sido posible uh, evitar este, este desafío y solo ir alrededor de la montaña. Y cuando eres una guía, tú buscas la mejor manera de mostrar a alguien cómo llegar a la destinación al que quieren llegar. When you're a guide, 
it's not just about getting somewhere yourself, but it's about knowing how to show someone the best way to get there, the safest way to get there, the most guaranteed way possible to get there themselves. And so that's for me, I became a guide, not just by getting there myself. So for example, I speak English as my first language, but that doesn't really qualify me to be an English language teacher and coach. I had to study, explore, and really think about the English language and how we learn languages and what's the easiest way for someone else to learn English. It's not gonna be the same way that I did because I learned it as my first language, they're gonna be learning it as their second language. Entonces, para mí, yo no empecé como guía. Yo soy, yo hablo inglés como mi lengua materna, pero esto no es lo que me califica para ser maestra de inglés. Porque solo porque yo hablo inglés no significa que yo sé cómo enseñarlo a otros. No sé que yo entiendo cómo otras, otra gente necesita aprender el inglés como lengua segunda. Entonces, yo tenía que estudiar el proceso de aprender un, un idioma. Yo, yo enseñé el inglés. Yo, uh, yo soy una mucho mejor maestra de inglés porque primero yo aprendí el español y era maestra de español. Eso es la verdad. This is the truth. I am a much better English teacher because I learned Spanish and because I became a Spanish teacher. That's what made me a much better English teacher because that's what allowed me to see so much more of what the best way to reach fluency in English is. And same thing with my Spanish. I got to my, I got to a high level of Spanish fluency the hard way. And I don't wanna teach people the hard way. I teach my students the way that I wish I could have learned because that's what a good guide does. Yo soy una guía porque, no porque yo, yo alcancé un, un nivel de fluidez en español muy alto. Eso me pasó después de dos o tres años de estudiar el español. Uh, pero cuando yo llegué a una, a una fluidez en español uh, alta, uh, profesional más o menos, aquí en los Estados Unidos por lo menos, yo llegué hasta, yo alcancé este, esta fluidez pero la alcancé por una ruta, por una manera muy, muy difícil, con muchas lágrimas y sudor y determinación. I got there with my blood, sweat, and my tears. Entonces, eso no es como yo quiero enseñar a otro a aprender el español, porque esa persona probablemente si tiene solo un poco menos determinación que yo, si es un poco menos terco, entonces no va, no va a alcanzar. Yo ahora enseño a mis estudiantes en la misma manera que yo quisiera aprender. Que yo quisiera aprender otro idioma. Ahora yo enseño en la manera que yo dese desearía que yo hubiera aprendido el español, porque eso es lo que hace una buena guía. Y finalmente, para mis estudiantes, yo digo, yo soy Nikki. Cuando empiezo cada clase, yo digo, yo soy Nikki, tu maestra, tu coach, tu guía y tu amiga. Y eso es muy importante para mí. The last thing that I say in my introduction for every single one of my classes is I say, I'm Nikki, your teacher, your coach, your guide, and I usually do it in Spanish, your teacher, your coach, your guide, and your friend. And that one's really important for me. And that's when that it's possible to leave off. It's possible to just say your teacher, to just be. It's possible to be a teacher, a coach, a guide, and give someone an amazing, life-changing experience of working with you. Es completamente posible solo ser un maestro, un coach, y un guía, y dar a tu cliente, dar a, a, a tus estudiantes una increíble experiencia de trabajar contigo. Una experiencia que cambia la vida. 
si eres un buen maestro, coach y guía. Pero para mí es tan importante ser una amiga porque eventualmente, si yo soy un, una muy buena maestra, coach y guía, eventualmente yo quiero quedarme sin trabajo. Yo quiero que mis estudiantes lleguen, al, lleguen a, a, a la, al nivel de fluidez, al nivel de su vida, a las metas que, que alcancen, las metas que tienen y que no me necesitan más. Pero todavía yo no quiero que me necesiten, pero... Y no, yo quiero quedarme sin trabajo, pero no quiero quedarme sin la relación ni la amistad con esta persona. Porque para mí, el punto de todo esto, el punto de mi trabajo, lo que significa mi trabajo, la razón por qué, mi motivación, por qué hago mi, mi trabajo, es para construir relaciones, amistades con más y más gente que son diferente, que es diferente que yo, diferente que mí y para compartir esta vida y ayudarnos unos a los otros por toda la vida. Eso para mí, es, eso es el propósito de todo. Es el propósito de estar viva aquí en los, en los Estados Unidos, en el mundo, en el mundo, en todo el mundo, no solo en mi país. Es tener relación con otros, es tener comunidad con otros. Y mantener esta relación por toda la vida. So, you can be an amazing professional, a teacher, a coach, a guide. And you can hire an amazing teacher, coach, and guide and get exactly what you want, have a life-changing experience. But for me, it is absolutely essential that I also present myself as a friend. Because eventually, I want to be out of a job. I want to work myself out of a job with my students. I want them to reach the level of fluency in their second language that they want. I want them to have confidence in the process and in knowing themselves and knowing exactly what they need to do to keep going on their own. I want to help people discover what's holding them back to get past it, to fulfill their goals, and not to need me anymore. I don't want my clients to need me anymore. I want my students to outgrow me. But just because I want to be out of a job doesn't mean I want to be out of your life. Because for me, and that's the difference, I have had coaches that once I was no longer paying them, they were incredible coaches, but once I was no longer paying them, the relationship was over. And that's okay. That's professional. That's just not how I operate. Yo he tenido esta experiencia. Yo he tenido unos coaches que eran coaches eran profesionales increíbles que me ayudaron mucho pero el minuto en que yo paré de pagar a esta persona terminó la relación y esto está bien yo entiendo pero no es como yo me manejo no es como manejo mis relaciones y mi negocio once i'm out of a job I don't want to be out of your life because for me, the whole point of doing this is to build relationship. The whole point is to build community between you and me, between you and more people and more people and more people and build this global community and build relationship because for me, that's what life is all about. It's all about people, not things. It's about how we're here, how knowing each other can change our lives. And I want relationships with as many people who are different from me as possible and to hold those and keep those going because that's only going to enrich my life. And so I want to build those relationships, but I don't want them to end. I want to carry them with me as part of a large global community for life. And that is why I introduce myself in every single class as Nikki, your teacher, your coach, your guide, and your friend. Entonces, eso es el por qué yo me presento en cada clase como tu maestra, tu coach, tu guía y tu amiga. Y si por acaso te interesa estudiar el inglés o el español 
o quieres trabajar conmigo en coaching, en algo, en las metas, en la vida, en la mentalidad. Oh, there we go. If you are looking to learn English, learn Spanish, or to work on mindset, on other life goals, and you are interested in working with me, then make sure you leave me a comment or click on the link for my website to get in touch because I have classes open for all levels of Spanish students at the moment, and I have consultations open for my life coaching clients, and I would love to start to build a beautiful relationship with you. Thanks so much for joining me in episode 93 of Spanish Saturday. Have a wonderful week and I'll see you next weekend in episode 94. Entonces, muchísimas gracias. Ha sido un placer estar aquí contigo durante este episodio de Spanish Saturday. Nos vemos el próximo fin de semana en el próximo episodio 94 de Spanish Saturday. I'll see you in the